Hello, my name is Cyclone Oz, and today we are tracking Tropical Low 05U. Located in the Coral Sea, it is expected to become a very significant tropical cyclone before impacting the Queensland coastline around Townsville area as a very powerful system. We'll be giving you a detailed forecast on this system where it's expected to make landfall, the rainfall um, expectation, storm surge, all of the factors. And then I'm going to be telling you how you can adequately prepare for this system over the coming couple of days because it is going to be a brutal system and it's going to come ashore with a fiery amount of wrath. It is a very scary forecast that we've got here. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and also leave a like on the video and check out the join button as well to become a channel supporter. I've already got a couple of channel supporters, their names will be mentioned at the end of the video. So I thank you so much. Um, but yeah, a powerful system that we're looking at staring down a barrel of. You can see right now on the IR satellite imagery, this tells us how intense the thunderstorms are. Those blacks and whites mean very powerful thunderstorm convection is blowing up around the center of circulation. Uh, meaning that this cyclone is developing and intensifying probably rapidly at this point, and it's likely to be upgraded to Tropical Cyclone Kiralee in around 24 to 36 hours time. Now, if this was in another part of the world, it would likely already have a designated name. However, the Bureau of Meteorology likes to complicate things, and they have a rule that dedicates that all, or dictates that all tropical cyclones need to have at least three quarters of their um, wind field in tropical cyclone winds. And right now this cyclone doesn't have it and thus it doesn't have a name. Now we're gonna start things off with the Access G3 wind forecast, then we're gonna switch it over to the GFS and take a look at another scenario with the ECMWF forecast. The initial impact zone is going to be around Townsville and then we're gonna take a look down in Southeast Queensland because they're expecting a hell of a lot of rainfall. But without any further waffle, let's get started. The Access G3 uh, wind forecast, you can see as we start playing it through today, the cyclone does intensify and organize a little bit as we get closer towards Monday, becoming that fully fledged tropical cyclone by around Monday afternoon um, and this is when it starts to really rapidly intensify this is where we're expecting the cyclone to go absolutely boom uh, in terms of intensification I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes as it heads towards the uh, uh, Great Barrier Reef Islands and the Coral Sea Islands it really puts on knots at a rate of knots one of my favorite phrases uh, talking about intensifying tropical cyclones becoming a category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone Wednesday or earlier on in the morning at around 5 or 6 a.m. local time and again it's going to continue to rapidly intensify becoming a category 4 around midday Wednesday and this is when it's going to get very close to category 5 status Wednesday night very close to the Queensland coastline it looks like this cyclone might get quite close to category 5 strength with peak wind gusts around the center approaching that 110 knots uh, that's about uh, 200 and what, five kilometers an hour. So it's getting very close to that category five intensity at that point. Very, very powerful system that we're gonna have sitting just offshore from the Queensland coastline. So it's gonna be pretty slow moving Tuesday and Wednesday, and it might pick up a little bit of pace before weakening slightly and making landfall on the Queensland, right on the top of air Thursday morning at around 8 a.m. local time. The times at the bottom are in Western Australian time, so at about two hours for Queensland, and that gives you the actual time that we're looking at in this forecast update. But yeah, right on the top of air, this is very good model certainty and model congruency um, that we've been seeing around the forecast models, which is good news for the forecasters because it means that we can make a really accurate and um, probably quite a high confidence forecast in terms of what we're expecting to happen here. And I'm very confident in saying that this cyclone is gonna landfall as a severe tropical cyclone between Townsville and Bowen, most likely on air. Um, and considering it's only about four days away now, actually, then I'm very, very confident and certain that this is actually going to be the situation that we see, which is good news because it means people in this area can start preparing now uh, and really get a head start on preparing for a tropical cyclone because with Jasper, they really only got about 24 hours to prepare for the catastrophic flooding that actually came from that system. So we're very underprepared there, mainly because the Bureau of Meteorology's rainfall forecast just had to be thrown out of the window. The Access G3 was the only model that really got that forecast uh, right. And we all discarded it because we thought 2200 millimeters was just absurd, but turns out that it was very, very close to what actually happened. I think the Access in the end was about 10 millimeters off Jasper's rainfall, which is just insane, but it was certainly a fluke. Uh, let me tell you. But the access here is looking like it's going to be a very accurate model. It's in line with what the GFS is also saying, and that's typically a very accurate uh, global model. I love the GFS forecast model, and it looks like it's got things right again with this cyclone here. And you can see it intensifies um, very slowly until about Tuesday, and that's when it starts to rapidly intensify for the first time. And it really does put on 
quite a bit of wind speed uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning uh, with the pressure down to, I think at peak intensity, 936 millibars. That is deep into Category 5 status on the Australian scale. However, I don't think it's reciprocated on this model forecast. This might be a couple of hours old still, but you can still see winds very, very strong alone on this forecast. And the GFS, as I've said time and time again, it's typically the low baller in terms of wind speeds. So if we were to take a look at wind gusts for sustained winds, we're probably looking at peak wind speeds of around 100 to 110 knots, very close to Category 5 status. If on the higher echelon of that, you're probably looking at a Category 5 strength, severe tropical cyclone lining up the Queensland coastline. It's possible, it's not likely that we're gonna see a category five landfall, but it is possible. Um, very, very dangerous system though. A category four strength system is, it can do a very similar amount of damage to a category five. A difference in 10 knots really doesn't make the world of difference in terms of uh, wind damages that we're expecting. What's really got my eye is the fact that the landfall site on the GFS is like five kilometers up the coast from what the XSG3 has. It's right on the top of Air and Townsville on the outer reaches of the Townsville uh, town center. So. That's very good model certainty, and it's not often you see that on about day four from these Australian forecast models. Generally, we're a little bit more unpredictable here in the Australian region, uh, but they are looking very, very confident with this landfall on the top of air. So I'm backing that situation right now. And even the ECMBF model as well, that's very confident in calling for a landfall around here as well. It calls for it a little bit further south on Bowen, but again, it's like 50 kilometers down the coast, if that. So very, very confident in that forecast as well. And at a relatively, well, it's a little bit weaker, but still a lot of winds wrapping around the center. Now, I've seen comments on this channel and also on the Force 13 AU channel, which is the other place that I'm producing updates on this system, um, regarding how people don't normally take uh, category two because, or take category two or category three seriously, because only 150 kilometer an hour wind gusts, that's what they're built for up here. And yes, to a degree that is true. Their building codes are very, very rigid up here and homes are very, very hard to destroy in a category three strength tropical cyclone. But when you're talking category four and maybe even high end category four, like we're seeing in this situation, um, with wind gusts approaching 115, 120 knots in some places on the coast, that's when we can see roof failure. That's when we can see just big trees blown over like toothpicks. Power poles will be ripped out. Flying debris will be absolutely crazy. So that's when we're starting to talk about really serious wind damage um, from these tropical cyclones. So take it seriously, make sure you're preparing. And if you've got loose branches um, on your property that are at risk of dropping onto your home or onto your carport or something like that, make sure that you're cutting them down over the next couple of days. If you live south of sort of Innisfail and Tully and down towards Proserpine or even Mackay as well, just make sure that you're as prepared as possible. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't happen, you're prepared for a severe thunderstorm that comes through the area. So it's kind of a win-win. Make sure you've got your generator as well ready because it's like that there's going to be power cuts to a lot of these communities um, on the Queensland coastline and also make sure you've got a fridge full of beer to ride out this cyclone because it looks like it's going to be a couple of days without access uh, to roads. The amount of rainfall that this storm is going to bring in some places, especially inland, is going to be crazy. So if the roads are flooded, you're going to need a good supply of beer or whatever, drink red wine, whatever takes your fancy. So make sure that you've got that um, as well, preparing for a cyclone. We know in Australia that's a very important factor, but taking this very seriously is um, definitely advised because a powerful cyclone like this, they only come around once in a decade for this part of the world. Um, it's going to be a similar situation to Cyclone Debbie or Cyclone Yasi, probably not as strong as, um, not Yasi, Marcia. It won't be as strong as Yasi and it probably won't be as strong as Larry either upon landfall, but it will still be a very strong system and it will deliver a lot of rainfall as well. Places outside of Huanda and you're looking at up to 500 millimeters in one or two spots. Around the landfall site, slightly less, around three to 400 millimeters of rain in one or two spots. Um, it's not as much because the cyclone will be faster moving than, say, Cyclone Debbie. So the rainfall threat isn't actually that high for the initial landfall site. But as I've said time and time again, on the inflow bands of the system, when you're getting those shower bands moving through, that's when you're going to see the really high one to two hourly totals of up to 100 or 150 millimetres in one spot. And as you stream into the coastline, this is when you're talking about some very high rainfall accumulations around uh, Yalbaru, outside of Proserpine, where you could be seeing one or two spots pick up up to 700 millimetres here and there along these coastal ranges outside of Mackay and Proserpine. So very extreme rainfall totals there. But again, the rainfall is kind of reserved for Southeast Queensland at this time. And before we take a look at that picture, I'll just briefly touch on storm surge 
Because of how strong the cyclone is expected to be and how deep the pressure is going to be, you're looking at peak wave heights approaching the coast of around 20 to 25 feet. That's around seven to nine meters. And a storm surge above three meters above the highest astronomical tide is certainly possible. On these reefs out the Coral Sea, you're probably looking at wave heights approaching 12 meters. So that's around 36, maybe even up to 40 feet in one or two locations. Very, very high waves, very dangerous waves. Just avoid boating on the Queensland coastline on Wednesday or Thursday. You don't want to be caught up in something like this. This is ridiculous stuff. Even massive ships, the world's biggest freighters, would avoid a 10 or 11 metre wave. So just don't go near them. Don't go swimming. I, I think that goes without saying, but stay as safe as possible in a situation like this. However, the surf should probably be pretty good on Friday or Saturday with the onshore surf and also an offshore wind in some locations. So um, if the waters are safe and you feel confident enough to do so, then maybe there'll be one or two good surfing locations in uh, along the beaches from Townsville down towards Mackay or even Rockhampton in one or two spots. But again, I'm not really familiar with the area, so I'm not going to comment too much on that. Now, as promised, we will take a look at the rainfall forecast for southeast Queensland because a lot of rainfall is expected. We'll start things off with the worst case scenario, the Access G3 model, and I'm going to explain how this is not likely to happen and how this is the worst case scenario. They're expecting a ridiculous amount of rainfall to fall as this tropical cyclone passes down here over Gympie and um, down towards Noosa, and then it will sit off the shore from about Brisbane, and then it will jump back inland on uh, maybe Sunday evening or so, still as what looks to be a category one strength tropical cyclone by the look of that pressure. But it's gonna drive a lot of this moisture ashore, this tropical moisture from the uh, Pacific Ocean ashore into locations uh, such as the Gold Coast or Byron Bay, down towards Grafton even, and uh, right through the Brisbane Metro. And there'll be places inland around Bow Desert, e even as far inland as Toowoomba, that receive rainfall accumulation above a meter. There's a lot of places here that are expecting some really significant rainfall totals around the Gold Coast, probably up to 1500 millimeters on this forecast. Is this possible? Yes. Is this likely? We don't know. Um, by around Friday, we'll get a very good idea of how much rainfall is expected, but I would be inclined to say prepare right now for around four to 500 millimeters in these locations. 1500 is definitely on the extreme end. That's more rainfall than we saw um, on, for the 1974 Brisbane city floods, which um, mind you were 50 years ago, basically the day actually. Um, so prepare for this ridiculous quantity of rainfall. Make sure that you're watching the forecast very closely. We'll be giving you updates on this channel as well, so make sure you are subscribed. Um, but again, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to happen, and I'm not too confident in this situation actually happening. So we'll be watching it closely, but I'm not 100% um, confident in making a forecast on this right now. The Eastern WF model has also thrown up quite a lot of rainfall, again, in one or two locations on the scenic rim, up to 600 millimetres, and also around Ipswich, four to 500 and then up the coast. Um, quite a lot of rainfall there along the Sunshine Coast too, extending up towards Gympie. 500 millimeters is a pretty safe bet. So if you live in an area that's prone to flooding, especially flash flooding as well, make sure that you're preparing, getting your sandbags ready, not set up yet, mind you, because it's still at least seven or eight days away, but make sure you're getting everything ready. And you've got your flood plans starting to get into place at this time. We're gonna know a lot more by the middle of next week. Um, but I'm not really going to comment. This is just a very good heads up on what is possible and what is expected over the next 10 days. Now, there will be more updates on this situation on this channel as well, so make sure you are subscribed. It also really helps us out as well. And if you want to monetarily support us, click the join button down below as well. It really does help out. And for $5 a month, um, it will go a long way, let me tell you. So thank you so much for your support in advance. But yeah, that basically does it for this forecast from this tropical uh, system. It's a pretty meaty forecast. There's a lot of factors to it. We're very confident now um, in saying what impacts are expected, at least from the initial landfall. It's gonna be a very strong system making landfall on Thursday the 25th, probably more likely in the morning hours than in the evening hours, probably of category three or category four strength proportion, somewhere between Townsville and Bowen, most likely on air. Very strong system expected, very dangerous system expected. It's a concerning forecast. However, there's still a lot of factors that will determine um, where this cyclone goes that can change. We could be seeing the cyclone jump 50 kilometers up the coast, which would bring it right over the top of Townsville, or it could jump 50 kilometers down the coast, which would bring Mackay under some pretty dangerous cyclone conditions. So there's still quite a lot of varying factors, but the forecast is becoming a lot more honed in, which is good news because it means that we can really start to say with high confidence what's gonna go on. Now, if you do live south of Innisfail along the coastline to about Mackay, prepare for tropical cyclone conditions now. That's getting your cyclone emergency kits in place, 
um, making sure you've got a working radio, you've got enough canned food to um, last about a week or so, getting your bottled water, fuel for the generator, making sure the generator is working. And as I mentioned before, making sure that you've got enough beer or drinks on ice, because it will be a situation where you could be going a couple of days without power in some locations, and maybe even a week in one or two locations that get really cut off or badly hammered from this tropical cyclone. And even as far inland as Charters Towers or even Huandon, make sure that you're preparing for some very significant rainfall and also some dangerous wind gusts by trimming up trees on your property that are at risk of dropping branches. It's very important that you stay up to date with the Bureau of Meteorology as well. They'll be bringing the latest on their um, forecasts. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did end up enjoying it, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Alexa Munoz, who is our first channel sponsor. So thank you so much to Alexa. It's really uh, great to have you supporting the channel. And if you also want to get um, on to the end of the video as well, please do consider clicking the join button and selecting the channel sponsor. It's a small price to pay and it really does help me out in funding the equipment that I use and also the software that I use to produce these videos. So thank you so much and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.